are skewed in favor of a particular candidate as well. Now, we're going to hear from Alan Chamantin when he visited this Northeast candidate who suffered some uh, bruises as a result of the violence. One eye closed. Take a look. On Saturday was an act of total indiscipline and indecent behavior. How do we, as a decent party, going into an election, particularly at the level of superdelegates, superintend such behavior? I mean, look, we all joined the NPP because of our commitment to the values of the party. But what is happening clearly shows that this is not what we bargained for by joining the party. I'm not going to tolerate this kind of behavior. There are a few other things um, that also uh, came up after this, and the party accepted the decision to withdraw, and then also indicated what the way forward is. Take a look at the, the, the statement um, that he put out. He says he's not convinced that the circumstances that he has referred to earlier, that's the point, and I'll start off with, with you on this will not persist or even be escalated in the next round of elections for which balloting is scheduled for Wednesday, 6th, September 2023. So even though the party says it is investigating all the issues he raised, he says that he essentially doesn't have faith in the structures of the party to deal with this particular case. Do you see this outcome or this development posing any threat to the NPP? Well, I think that uh, it doesn't uh, because Alan Chamantins with the, the uh, it doesn't the, the the allegations that has been stated out there per the press statement is inconsistent with the reality. It's inconsistent with the reality. What's the uh, reality? The 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 reality is that um, I do not think that the use of phrases like widespread intimidation. This is an allegation that was stated in the press release. Is the reality on the ground? Because yes, I am a voter. I voted in the Ashanti region as a member of parliament. Mm -hmm. There are 16 um, electoral centres, and you add the headquarters, making it 17. Now, out of the 17, if there is one centre that recorded that incident which had his agent had that damage of the eye. Can that be interpreted to mean that there was widespread intimidation? That is one. Two, if you also allege that there was some inducement, me sitting here, I feel very insulted as a member of parliament. Why? Because I'm a voter, I'm part of the special delegates conference. Mm -hmm. So if I go out to go and vote, because of my belief in a particular candidate, and you allege that I have been induced, I feel very insulted. You are telling me that I don't have a mind of my own to be able to vote for a particular candidate. What can Dr. Baumia give me? Can he come in? What, what is it? What is it? Why didn't he give me something if there's an inducement? So I don't believe that that is the issue. That is also not consistent with the reality. Now again, another issue that is also inconsistent with the reality is that if you say that the election was skewed strategically, tactically, to favor a particular candidate, that is also not the reality because the constitution of the new patriotic party is crystal clear as to the membership of who becomes a delegate or who is entitled to vote as a delegate. It talks about 275 members of parliament. So in our, in our instances, we have 137 members of parliament who were eligible to vote or who voted. We also have 272 regional executives who were entitled to vote. We also have constituency chairman, chairman, 275 of these constituency chairmen. We also have founding fathers. We have okay. former presidents. And these people have been given an opportunity, or if you like, a right 
to be part of the special delegates conference can there be a suggestion even for once that anyone was allowed to vote when that person was not given a mandate under the constitution of the new patriotic party i am very passionate about this issue because mm -hmm. the stature of the honorable alan Martin is so huge i've had occasion to indicate that he is a gentleman to fault i have no problem with him like many others who voted for dr Baumia. Nobody has any problem with him. But when you bring out such a statement, it casts a slur on the integrity or the security integrity of the state. Because it is supposed to be an internal election. A party that rules governmental power. That party cannot peacefully organize its election. You are suggesting to the international community that come 2024, it will be a showdown. But that is not the case. The case is that there was an isolated issued that happened during the 26th August electioneering process. And that isolated process or that isolated case is what happened in the Northeast. Agreed. We have condemned it. It is not supposed to be happening. That is why there has been a trigger of investigation into those matters okay. by the National Executive Committee. So if anybody attempts to suggest that the establishment, the, the National Party, or leadership. In fact, one of the allegations that you also made with but respect is that to that one isolated case not worrying enough for you as a party. But I'm saying that, that if you use, if even let's assume uh -huh. that in that one isolated case where one person yes was left with bruises, his eyes. I have condemned bruised. it. I have condemned it. it is, You've condemned that. It, it is shameful. But I'm saying that if that allows such a person of his stature put out a statement which is accessible to international community that there was widespread intimidation that cast a slur on the integrity of, of, of the state. But my problem is, if okay. you go ahead to allege that there were some leading members mm -hmm. who were supporting a particular candidate, mm -hmm. and for that matter, you feel that the system or the electionary process was not fair, then I ask myself, there were other leading members in the party who were also supporting you. In fact, there were cabinet ministers, like the Honorable Amewu, mm -hmm. supporting Alan Martin. They are uh, minister, that okay. like deputy minister, like Abna Osiasa, right. who was also All supporting right. Alan. So, I mean, it cannot be a basis for you to say that because of that, I am withdrawing. I only have believed that there are other reasons why he is withdrawing, and probably he he he, he didn't want to go straight or if like direct. Well, he says in, in the coming days we'll get to know the role he will play in Ghana politics. Um, Lama, to people, a brief one on this, really, um, because um, mm -hmm. in, in the end. In fact, there's been calls for him to even go independent so that there will be a third force and so on for the MPP and the NDC. I don't know if this is uh, a, a suggestion that, that you, you would buy into and especially taking into consideration the reasons why he even took this decision in the first place to withdraw from the race of the, of the MPP flag brothership. Lawyer. Okay. So my first comment is that Alan's performance uh, really... Um, you just say, well, it was a long time coming. Long time coming because, you know, it looks like there's a certain um, deficit. He doesn't have what it takes to organize a political campaign. Yes, sadly so. So I can tell you, I have known Vincent for maybe uh, 2040, mm -hmm. so 2030. Yeah, you nine, ten he, years. You oh, no, he let's leave that. Okay, nine, all right. Oh, all right. Okay. All right. okay. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> yeah. But that's so, true, right? No, no that's oh, okay. Yeah, that, yeah that's so. Of yes. uh -huh. So yeah. now, the yeah. thing oh, is that those right. days, they didn't teach you after John Kuma. Non justiciable. Those days, you see, those days after John Kuma, the next person you see as an Alan boy. It's Vincent. Yes. So today when I walked in, I even thought Vincent was coming to talk for Alan. Ah, <laughs> then it looked like, no, he wasn't talking for Alan. He was at his ministry for about seven months. Uh-huh. And Vincent then... was there. Yes. He and then was okay. John Kuma. Before he moved uh, in a post. Right. And John right. Kuma is no longer in Alan's camp. John Kuma is with Fufuriata and Co. Other people, I've heard, I've talked to a few party people, people who were in Alan's camp, they all switched. Yes. Then I said, no, this is a lost cause. It's a lost cause. So to sum up, uh, this is Mr. Kansi. No, I don't support Alan for an indep independent candidate. I've made it very clear that the people I support for an independent candidate is the churches. Let the churches come together. Hmm? 
Uh, the Catholic Church, the Pentecostals, the Charismatics, all of them, Chief Imam and his people, they should come together and give us a candidate to rival Sami Jinfi's uh, NDC okay. and then uh, this, uh, what do you call it, Baumia in the MPP. We are tired of the NDC and MPP then. No, they are the same. Except it's, it's proven that now NDC is less corrupt than uh, uh, MPP because the the Gantuan corruption we are facing we, we today, we are and they are less corrupt. They are less, uh, oh, Mama was also corrupt. It, it, just no, like, no, no, no. but okay. son is on a grander scale. Ekufadu's son is on a grander scale. He's a mother serpent of corruption. So uh, we want okay. to get something different from NDC and MPP. Let the Catholic Church, the Pentecostals, the right. uh, okay. Chief Imam, and people give us a candidate. Let's try something. We are tired okay. of this. Politicians, they are crooks, eh? crooks Okay, crooks, crooks. Uh, Dr. Sassante, let me bring you quickly on, on, on this. Uh, this independent candidate uh, proposal that Alan sh is, should consider, well, he hasn't given any indication of that, but it says in the coming weeks we'll get to know what, what he will do. W would he have any gravitas if it, if it goes on that path? Yeah, good morning to my friends in the studio. I love the conversation. Uh, <clears throat> the issue is that that idea, I'll be surprised Mr. Um, Chairman Teng will want to take that route. Uh, one, he is not going to win as an independent candidate, far from it. Uh, two, if you want to, let me explain why he will not win as an independent candidate. If you look at independent candidate, the history of this country, nobody has survived. It's simply because the two party traditions are so strong that it does not allow for independent candidate to get roots. Uh, those who are pushing for uh, he joining other smaller parties to have a third force, and I see my champion lawyer, uh, lawyer Kwebu, saying that the, the churches and all the religious uh, groups should come out with uh, uh, a third force. Yes, if that will work, fine. But the third force will also not have roots here. Why? If you look at this country, even pre-independence, during independence, post-independence, the parties we've had are two-party traditions. Uh, so if you look at the NDC, it's nothing but an offshoot of the CPP when mm -hmm. uh, they became weak, and then we had a CP, uh, this NDC. So any third force uh, is likely to struggle. In fact, in Ghana, you are not going to win elections in the nearest future. All right, uh, let's cast our mind back to two party systems, United States, uh, Britain, um, you know, other countries. Third force have not been able to survive, no. So it gives you an idea that third force in our part of the world, it's not. Uh, look at the, uh, we have done my team, which uh, last election you recall, the work we did with you, Election Watch. We did yes. a study from 1992 to 2020. And research shows that all the small parties, their performance put together, do not go beyond 4%. Yes. And you are talking about a president where you need to cross the thresholds Even of 50 votes were more uh, than that. beyond mm -hmm. 50%. Mm -hmm. So it is actually an impossible adventure. But what, if he should go on that route, what then I, my understanding is that he's going to rock the boat of the NPP, which, remember, he can, he's a force to reckon with within the party. So he will pull some people along. And remember, you need just one vote to move you from a candidate to become a president. So even if he's going to get 100 or 200 votes, it's going to cause the NPP seriously. Right. And let's cast our mind back to 2000, when Reform Party came up as a protest against NDC. Where NDC should have, NDC lodged, uh, lost marginally. One of the factors was the reform. Reform was able to pull a number of votes. And that, if you look at those people, they were nothing but the MPP, NDC people. So if you put all their votes together, it would have, NDC would have carried the day. But things turn differently. So okay. this is what I see. Right. Uh, he can go on that route if you want to undermine the fortunes of MPP. That's one. And or he would like to stay and convince himself that he will win that one. It is an, you know, a mission okay. of suicide. Suicide mission. You won't win. All right. All right. So these are the things that are there. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sasante. Sami Yevi, go on on this. My brother, mm -hmm. the resignation, or if you like, withdrawal by Mr. Alan Kojo Chairman Tim from 
the MPP's ongoing presidential primaries is understandable. For me, I think that we should credit the man with some intelligence. This is a very experienced politician, somebody who was very instrumental in the formation of the MPP as a political party. He has paid his dues to that political party. He has read the situation and he has come to the conclusion that he cannot survive the rigged system that is currently being implemented. The entire MPP presidential primaries has been rigged for the establishment candidate, Alaji Baobia. I mean, and, and you, you have to be an amateur in politics not to see this. In fact, it should be clear even to the uninitiated that this is a rigged system. The general secretary, the national chairman, national officers, regional officers, constituency officers who are referees in the election are all actively working to get Bawumia elected at all costs because President Ekufuad, who currently controls the MPP, needs a puppet who can protect him and his family and friends after he leaves office in 2020, 2024. And they can't get that puppet in Kennedy, Japan. Certainly, Alan Chermanti cannot be that puppet. So the pudo, the stooge, they have now is Alaji Bawumia. And therefore, they are determined to do everything possible. There is no way Alan Chermantin could have survived the violence, the excessive inducement. When you were talking, I was quiet. Listen, there are rules on this program. Yes. What about that word don't you, don't you understand? Who doesn't know that Bawumia is a Who doesn't know? You just want to... Let me make my point. Look. So you don't How do I wrap up on my wait, point? Wait, you wait, just wait, gave me the opportunity. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> you just gave, I just started my submission, wait, so don't tell me to wrap up. Wait, 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 Sami, just round up. Okay. Do, right. We are not here to make you happy. You see, Alfred, look at what happened. In this modern day, more than three decades of multi-party democracy, you have the ruling party embarking on a family affair, an exercise okay. to elect a leader. And the whole thing has, has been turned into a war movie. Look at what right. they are doing to their own. Beating people right. up, slapping people with blood gushing out of people's faces. And you are here right. underestimating it. It's only one event, uh, uh, one incident, two incidents. Yeah. If you were slapped, what are your ball when you were in the Is that what you would have said? Okay. You see, oh, let me make my point. Round, I beg round you. up for me. I have How do I round up? You don't want me to talk. <laughs> so I mean, round up. Okay, yes. okay, I'll wrap up round in one up. minute. Right. So the violence was too much. The MPP today has become synonymous with violence. The MPP today has become an institution of violence. Every electoral process they are involved in turn out violently. And that is why my advice to the young people watching us okay. is that, look, even the old men like Alan are running away. The MPP is not the party okay. for you. But finally, what they right. are engaging is a marathon to nowhere. It's okay. a race to the bottom. Because no right. matter who they elect, even right. if they elect the establishment candidate by Wumia, he is still going to lose because he has been okay. a spectacular failure, having oh. supervised the worst ever economic performance in our history. Thanks. Today is the battle of all jokes in town. Right. Nobody <clears> takes <throat> you seriously. Okay. So they should stop killing themselves. This is just a democratic <laughs> exercise within your own okay. party. Thank you. See yourselves as brothers. Learn from the NDC. When we were elected President Mahama Few, we said, thank go. You. we thank didn't hurt anybody. You. Nobody got was oh, Thank you. Professor Inokenchi. Yes. 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 Professor yes. Inokenchi. Uh, uh, Sorry. Alfred, I have two minutes. Uh, okay. Please, uh, gentlemen, gentlemen uh, thank you. I'm on the floor. I have two minutes. History can repeat itself. We know from 1979 that Pauli left the Popular Front Party mm -hmm. to form the United National Convention. At that time, Nanadu's uncle, uh, Nanadu was the secretary, he joined his uncle yeah. Pauli, and that made to Victor Usuluzin and uh, Hilary Mann, Dr. Hilary Mann, winning the election. So history can repeat itself if Alan decides to join another force. We also know that the Green Party really hurt our goal uh, in U.S. elections when uh, in Florida when he could not win. So any break away from the MPP could also hurt them, like what uh, Dr. Ansan said, mm -hmm. because politics is about numbers. 
But Alan has himself to blame. Uh, Alan was into politics way before Baumia got into politics. And to allow them, Baumia and the, the forces to mafia him in this way, I'm surprised. But it's because... You can't compete with the money. Yes, yeah, Sami, I'm saying, but... Okay. I, 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 right. Sami, I have not right. landed. Sami, Sami, wait. Wait until I finish my word. Alan, Alan was branded as Alan Cash. Okay. Alan was branded as Alan Cash. So okay. if somebody has beaten you to Sikana the Cash Sikana syndrome, Sikana you see, Sikana. so there's a problem. Sikana he was branded, okay. he was you. branded Thank wrongly. You. Thank you. Gentlemen. Alan Thank was branded you. wrongly. And he's been advised you. wrongly. Okay. So I think that we need peace. But okay. please, no. gentlemen, no. give me a floor. Okay. You see, we are not getting anywhere in our politics. Yes. If you look at the money people pay, now if you don't have about 1.4 million, you cannot contest for election. Multiply by, by, by 275 MPs, and if you contest it with three or four other people, the money they all spend in the electionary period. In we should look into in this. You know, this, this way that we are spending so much money in elections, we are thinking about the next election, the next elections. We should not be going to the IMF for loans when we have money here and we are wasting all the money on the electionary processes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Professor Enoch uh, uh, Professor Enoch Opoku Enchi, thank you. Thank you very much. He is the Dean of the Business Development you know, at the, at, and, and Leadership at the Accra at, uh, Academic City University. Thank you. He's a governance and leadership expert. Martin Pebu, thank you very much. He's a private legal practitioner. Sami Jemfi is communications officer of the NDC. And Echo Vincent Tassefua is member of parliament for the Old Tafo constituency. Thank you. Thank you very much for staying with us here on Key Point. We're also live on 3FM 92.7. On behalf of the rest of the team, thank you for joining us. I am Alfred Okanse. On behalf of the Key Point production team, we appreciate your time. Have a good week.